Right, so um, we'll get going then. So I want to hear like the uh, the Henry Neal story, if you like, um, before we arrive at where you are at the moment in the uh, touring car show fee. So um, presumably yeah. you've a lot of uh, experience in and around British touring car paddocks, I'll assume, um, growing up. So yeah. at what point do you kind of go, this is what I want to do as a career, I want to have a go at it myself. And equally, when you are growing up and watching the races, is there any particular moments which stand out that you remember? Well, I've obviously I've grown up around it. I've been I've been at circuits uh, pretty much as soon as I come out of the womb. Um, but the sort of um, one of the one of the first big memories I have um, of tour, of touring cars is when in two thousand five when Dad won the title. Uh, so I'd have been I'd have been ten then, um, and I remember me and Will we got on the podium, and I remember just wat- watching Dad and thinking, you know, yeah, this this is what I, this is what I want. Um, but then over the next few years, um, dad was sort of flat out with his racing. Um, and because my parents split when they were younger, I wouldn't see my dad too much. I'd see him when, when I can and all that. Um, so it wasn't really, um, when I was younger, I wasn't straight into racing sort of thing. I never did. I was never did the karting thing or any of that sort of stuff. I played about in corporate carts and stuff here and there just for a bit of fun. Like. Um, and then how the racing sort of came about, I was, um, well, I, before that, I um, so yeah, so I, I went to work when I finished college and stuff. I went to work for a family business, um, sort of to get a bit close to dad. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do at the time, so I thought, you know, something to do. So I worked at the mark- marketing agency for a bit, um, for a year. And then basically, our team manager at the time, Pete Crawler, who's now the team manager at Hats, he left. Um, so I got a phone call off my dad. He said, right, tomorrow morning, you're going to go up to Persia, where, which is where the race shop was at the time. And uh, you're going to basically be the new team manager until we find an official, official role sort of thing. So I was like, all right, okay, sound. <laughs> so the next thing, I'm driving up the M- M5 uh, to go to Persia to become the new team manager for a bit. And I, I sort of knew all the team um, just from sort of growing up around it, like Barry and all that, et cetera, and some of the, the, the lads that have been there a while. Um, so yeah, I did that sort of role for about six, seven months until we got our new team manager in, uh, James Rogers. Um, and then I sort of did bits and bobs here, helped out in the stores. And then, um, another chap we had, um, who were doing the body work and stuff. He basically, he basically left, um, which meant we had no one to do the body work, um, fabricating and all that. So then I've got roped into that and I've basically been doing that ever since, but, uh, the race, racing wise, uh, how it all kicked off, um, we're at a um, test in Brands in winter, Jan- January test or February test, I think it was, in, God, uh, what year would that be? 2013, I think, or 2012, something like that. Um, anyway, and one of um, one of uh, Flash's sponsors and the team sponsors at the time uh, was a chap called, well, it was a company called Arthur Mackay, uh, run by a guy called Paul Mackay. Who's now a really good fr- good friend friend of mine and, and the family and his sons Dan and Ewan, uh, also good friends. And I basically got talking to him, um, and he was like, "Why aren't you racing?" Sort of thing. Why aren't you should be racing? Blah blah blah. And uh, I was like, "Ah, oh, just never never really never really happened. I've always been ar- been around it. I'd love love to do it. Um, never really happened." And I was like, just like gave him a nudge. I was like, "Go on, go and have a word with the old man. Just as a sort of throwaway comment as a joke." Um, anyway, the ne- next morning, um, we're at the circuit and dad comes to me and he goes, uh, you know, that Paul, Paul Mackay chap, um, he's just said he'll give you it. Cause basically he raced, um, legends up in Scotland with his two sons. Yeah. They're really cool. Them legends racing. Yeah. They're really Proper man things fixed rear racks or rear wheel drive. They're pretty hairy. And, uh, he was like, yeah, he's just offered to basically pay for you to have a test and provided that goes well, it'll pay for the first round for you. And I was like, I got really emotional. I couldn't believe it because obviously it was a childhood dream uh, finally sort of come into reality. So the, ne- the next thing is, obviously did the test. The next thing, I'm up, driving up to Scotland, um, went and did the test, which went well, um, and then did the first race weekend, which went well. And then dad sort of got really behind me then and sort of understood I was sort of hungry for it. Because uh, yeah. I think the main thing, you didn't really want to obviously, as, as you'd understand, you didn't want to invest in the cost of racing unless you know, you know that you are really hungry for it. So we did that and then we did the full season, which went well. We run the rookie championship. So that was good. Um, and then after that, it was sort of, well, well what do we do now? Uh, we need to do something sort of cost effective because obviously sponsors at the time, I, I didn't really have any sponsors. 
apart from obviously what we had on the touring cars, which was help basically paying for me. Um, so we, we were like, right, let's do mini challenge. You know, the cars are fairly basic, uh, modifying wise, just suspension wheels, no engine mods or anything, just a cage. So we found a, uh, an old mini Cooper, which we then started stripping down and basically turning into a race car. Um, and then, so we got that prepped, I think it was about 2 a.m. on the, before the Friday test. Um, so, so then we got, we got to circuit, we tested it, really went, 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 went really well, had a good race one. And then race two, coming down, was at Donington and coming down Craner Curves, um, just coming into the braking area, I had a guy smack me at the, smack me at the arse and basically sent me into the gravel, rolled and destroyed the car. Second race in, so I was obviously like, not not chuffing and the funny thing i was upside down i didn't realize i was so i was a bit sore so i did a couple of rolls i undid my belt so just went doosh just nutted the uh nutted the roof of the bloody car which one weren't ideal so anyway the next thing is we we found another um cooper from a scrapyard um re and then rebuilt that and then uh and then that la uh, lasted us the season then which is which is good. We got a, We could finally got a win at the end of the season, and uh, I think we finished fifth overall in the championship, fourth or something. Which is good. Which then led us on to doing the JCWs, which we did uh, for three years, which was good. It was really really enjoyable. Probably they're not not too easy to drive those things. So, which but it was good. It was sort of it was a good stepping stone between, you know, a, a basic front wheel drive car to the touring car because uh, obviously sequential box. Um, you got a big, big diff in them, so you learn how to work the diffs and you know hang on to the rear because the rears are pre pretty hairy on them. Uh, but they went good. We had we had a lot of wins and podiums and stuff in that. We had a lot of bad luck with them as well. Like um, the drive shafts used to be. I'm not sure what they're like now. But they, they were like cheese and butter. Like I remember being on pole position at Rockingham, pull pull away to warm my tyres, and that's it. No drive shaft goes, and I have to pull off. So we had, we, had a, we had a fair few mechanicals, which mean we didn't fare too well in the championship. But the races we did do, we did, we did, we did well in, um, and that was good because I had, my my brother was racing with me for a couple of those seasons, which was fun. Um, and then and then basically when the minis uh, was over, we were sort of like we've done it for three years now. We what what, what do we do next? And um, basically Stuart Lyons created the Touring Car Trophy Championship, which was obviously TCR and Touring Car Touring Cars. And we were like, oh, great, that works brilliant for us because we've got a spare, we've got an FK2 shell here. We've got a contain, because obviously uh, the rules of Touring Car Trophy were originally it had to be GPRM spec, so old old spec, not the current RML subframes. Um, and we literally had a container full of K20 engines, subframes, suspension, everything, and we just, just sat there doing nothing. So we were thinking, let's do that. It probably actually be cheaper to do that than to do another season of minis because we've got all the spares. Um so we built a car um, and then went and did, did the first test at Donington, which went well. Um, and then, yeah, went, went on the season from there and ended up, ended up winning, winning the championship. It was the first year. It was, it was technically not a championship, the Touring Car Trophy, um, for, for some reason with the regulations or, or something. But basically, we beat all the TCR cars and all the other Touring Cars. But uh, technically, we didn't win win the whole thing because it wasn't classed as a championship but so that was good and then we were like right let's do, let's do it again let's try and let's try and win it because this year it, well last year sorry it went into a championship so then yeah we won that again um the, the second thing is what they do is because it's not just touring car cars driving against each other and tcr cars driving against each other it's very much there's a big balanced performance so um so the cars do the exact same lap times TCR cars are allowed to run. I think it's about 30 more horsepower, 40 more horsepower than us. Um, but then we can, so they bridge the gap on the straights, but then we can bridge the gap on the under, under braking because we, we've got a lot better stopping power. So the, the lap times are bang on. I don't know if you've seen this year, me and Lewis all, all, all uh, year have been sort of back and forth um, with with the results. Um, so this year, it was, it, was, it was sort of TCR, TCT, but I'll basically, it was basically me and Lewis racing together all year, uh, which, was, which was good. It did come down to the last round and I managed to get two wins in Donington. And then um, I think Max, Max Hart actually won the, the third race, um, which, which wrapped up the title for us. So no, it was, it was a really good year and it was, it was living the dream, just you know, winning the championship in, the dad's, in my dad's car. 
Um, so yeah, couldn't have, couldn't have asked for anything more, really. Yeah, of course. So there's, uh, yeah, there's a couple of questions that I have from what you've said there. Um, first of all, when you jump out of a, a mini challenge car and into effectively a touring car, what's yeah. the main going between the two? Well, speed wise, they're, they're fairly similar. I think over, on an overall lap time, the mini challenge cars are about five seconds uh, slower than a touring car. Um, but the main th the thing is with the minis, they were you were you, you're on your tiptoes properly. Like you had to be very shallow on steering input. Um, you could when I mean, you could throw it about, but obviously if you're going sideways through a corner, you are scrubbing speed. You want to be trying to be as smooth as possible, ideally. Um, but a lot of driving the minis quick was sort of driving from driving them on the rear, sort of sliding them through a corner. Whereas a touring car, you can be a lot more confident with it. You could really grab it around the scruff and chuck it into a corner. And when it does, when it does, when the back end does sort of start to go, it's a lot more predictable to save it. Whereas a mini is you sort of, you, you're keeping your foot in, you're thinking, am I going to get this back? Whereas a touring car, you can get, I mean, I've, I've had, I don't know what, I've got a sequence when I'm literally backwards going into a corner, into the old hairpin, and you just keep your foot planted, you've got that much power, you can just pull yourself straight out. Um, so that was the thing, it, it was gone from, it basically felt like going, going from a road car, which has been adapted for a racing situation going into a full-blown race car when you get in it you feel like right this thing wants to be on a racetrack you know and even like going up and down the pit lane like it's like it's going like this it, unless you're doing and if you're doing under 30 miles an hour it just wants to stall like because it wants to be driven flat out constantly and uh stuff like the sequential box in a in a touring car is so much nicer than in a um uh the mini cars obviously because the, the, the gearboxes the extra potches they're best part of 20 grand um, as opposed to like you know five grand they are for the um quaith box in a mini but that, that's the, the whole thing of it isn't it um so the, the, yeah, the main difference is, is really just um the overall confidence you can be in a touring car you can be a lot more aggressive on turning um there are there are a lot quicker uh, and the brakes is possibly the probably the main thing yeah I think, um i think it's we can go from 130 mile an hour to 30 mile an hour and something like 1.3 seconds or 2.3 seconds or something so that was that was the biggest thing like when you hit the brakes and those things it, your whole face just, just goes <laughs> or back or whatever um and that's all where we had the edge on the tcr cars this year like you, you, as long as you got sort of alongside them you you know you you know you could outbreak them into the into the uh into the slow corners um but yeah definitely definitely love the minis but after driving a touring car, I don't think you'd ever want to drive anything else. <laughs> They're just that good. Yeah, so, so is that was that always the dream growing up? I mean, like I was speaking to uh, Mike Epps yesterday, and he when he was initially getting into, he went over to America. He was more single seater orientated, yeah. um, but always British touring cars. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things you idolise your dad as you grow up, don't you? And you see him winning all these championships and stuff, and you think, oh, I want to do that. I, I, I think that's, that's that's great. I want to I want to do that. So yeah, it's, I've never really had an interest. I never used to really like um, Formula One cars or anything growing up. Now I love it. I, I'm well in well into it or single. But I was never really into single seats. I always loved tin tops. Um, I like the fact you know you can have a bit of a fight with each other. You can bang doors. It's quite exciting to watch. Like the action you get in like three rounds of touring cars is more, in my opinion, than a whole a whole season of F1. Uh, I know it's a totally different, different, different style of racing, but um, that's what I like. I like getting getting stuck in sort of thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's. What was the? Um, I know you said you mentioned briefly. I wasn't initially going to ask you, but now you've mentioned it. I've, I've kind of got yeah. to. What's the dynamic between you and your brother, especially when you're racing? Because me and my brother, we don't race, but we also do karting every now and then. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. in front of me, he's going in the wall. Like, I'm beating him. I don't <laughs> care. Uh, so in an actual competitive situation, how does that dynamic work? Yeah, I'll, well, if we go in, if we go in corporate karting or something, or just down a local track or whatever, um, in, in, bum, in bum, bumper carts, then then he's getting put in the wall. Like, don't <laughs> get wrong, going to get put in the wall if he's behind me, but racing wise when we're on track it's all about working together so after every, every we're always trying to push each other to go faster so on so after every session test we'd, we'd come in we'd compare data we'd be like right well you're better on the brakes here or you've got more, more me corn here but i'm faster here i would always work together to try and get the, the fastest out of each other and if we're in a race if i, I was faster than him um you know i'd, I'd let you would let me go and vice versa it's it was never really we were trying to beat each other. Um, it was always trying to, you know, 
push each other on and get the best results for the team, really. Yeah, no, of course, that's that's fair enough. I'm, I mean, I'm still going to be honest, I'm still going to end up putting him in a wall with my brother. <laughs> um, I, presumably, you've obviously worked with um, and seen and indeed raced against lots of uh, kind of great drivers. Um, who would you say, whether it be watching as a kid or working with at Dynamics or racing with now, would you say has had like, a big impact on you? Now, you don't have to say your dad. Um, and equally, I'm not going to tell him if you say Jason either. What do you mean, like, uh, a driver's had a big impact on just my... Yeah, who looked at or just gone, bloody hell, he's, he's good? Oh, as a kid, as, I, know it's, I know it's classic cliche, but it has always been. My dad, I've always been... I've always wanted... I've seen what he's done, and I've always wanted to um, and be be that good sort of thing. Um, but as you, as, you, as you grow old and... Old and only 25, but as you... You know, through racing, you you sort of you focus on one or two guys in a season um, who you want to you'd actually target to beat. So in minis in the first year, it was sort of um, Nathan Harrison, um, Max Blade, and we were sort of the, the these are the main sort of two guys who were the main competitors. And then in uh, the JCWs, it was sort of the same again, uh, those guys. And then in the touring and then the touring car trophies. Um, it was probably yeah, Bob Lewis really. Um, so I'm always looking at the, you know, the guy who I've got to beat. Um, it's not necessarily my inspiration, but it, you know, it drives you on because you, you want to beat, you want to beat them, you know. But that's like after just racing, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, going back to TCT, like saying he's having your battle with Lewis. What is it like coming across the line, knowing that you've won it? Can you put into words what that's like? It's. It's pretty. I mean, the first win you ever get is euphoric. I remember. I remember in the mini challenge, the Coopers that we did, um, the first, the first year, winning the first race of that. We were, um, we were at Snetterton, and we blew an engine on the Friday. Uh, it was the Friday. It was, or it was. It might have been the Saturday after qualifying. We qualified about P8, I think. Um, but we realised the engine basically we lost compression in one of the cylinders. Um, so anyway. And the engine went, engine was kaput after we turned it off. So we had to work all the way through the night um, changing an engine. I, wanna, I remember one of my mates, George, um, he was sat in a truck while, while the lads were working away, just getting absolutely clarted on, on beer. <laughs> all the poor lads were working away. So that I think I stayed till about one or two and then I had to go because I was like, right, I need to go get... So they, well, to be fair to them, it was Alex Knight and Dave Kelly. Um, they were like, right, go go and get some sleep because you are racing tomorrow so I was like alright sound lads so anyway they got it done they got the got the engine in got it fixed and um, anyway so we started P8 and then we ended up winning that race and I remember I remember a, a lap um, a lap from home because it was quite it was a he- pretty hectic race I remember in one corner turn one at Snet I went from I think it was fifth to second and then um, in one corner I like sort of lined they're all dice and I lined them up and managed to get in and then stop the thing on the anchors <laughs> into the hairpin and um and yeah i remember a lap a lap pre- prior to finishing i started crying i was like i was like oh, come on then i was like focus i was like you, you gotta do this because you, you want to make your dad proud that's that's the main thing really um and yeah as soon as i crossed the line it was just like this sort of relief like you've just released all that emotion um and you do it for the boys because they worked hard you know getting the engine getting the engine in and that that was the biggest that was my best win I think I've ever felt uh, feeling wise but yeah when you win you do, when you win a race and you see the lads on the pit wall cheer and, and it's 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 really good feeling because it's just because you're so intense you're so full of adrenaline the whole race as soon as you cross the line it's like everything just gets released you calm down and it's like <sighs> right breathe sort of thing um and yeah it's just yeah no other I can't it's quite it, 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 not describable I can't really describe it but it's it's a good feeling and how does that multiply into when you've won a championship because I suspect that and I've heard quite a few drivers say so you don't necessarily realise that you've won a championship so you sit down in the evening and go we've had all of this full season's worth of work and then it kind of sinks in yeah it's a weird it's like it's almost like it's the thrill of the chase is almost better than actually winning it itself you know because ever, ever since I started racing obviously the goal is to win win a championship and to win a championship in a touring car is was my goal like um just to do it. obviously it's not in the btcc but it's still a touring car is touring car championship and you obviously you're pushing for it pushing for it for your whole for your whole sort of life or whatever or your racing career 
And when you get it, that split second you do it, it's like, we've done it, oh my God. And then you get back and you sit and it's like, it's like, right, what, what do we do now? Sort of thing. It's, you get back and you flex your trophies and you like, and you get obviously your Facebook and everything goes a bit mad. Um, but it's, it's almost a bit deflating in a way because it's like, okay, we've done that now. So what do we do now? We've, you yeah. know what I mean? It's an amazing feeling, but it's also on the other end of the spectrum. It's like, okay, we've done that. So you're a bit like, not lost, but you're a bit, okay, what's next sort of thing. Yeah, so uh, what would you say is next then? What are you looking at this year and obviously in the years coming? Uh, well, this year is sort of up in arms really with all the COVID stuff. It's, you know, sponsors are near impossible at the moment um, and budget's the main thing and we've got to we're trying to focus on the business as a whole really at dynamics um and we can't really afford to do a whole season of racing off the back of just you know the company um because we also have the gs sponsorship which helped pay a lot and then last, last year was was done sort of off the back of the other sponsors from btc um so we can't i don't know if we can justify doing it another year um i don't really know what the plan is at the moment because obviously racing has been pushed back for another another six six weeks or so and we're we're all furloughed i've been i've been furloughed uh since end of november basically um so i, I don't i think we're going to go back basically three weeks prior to the first touring car test so i may be having a year out this year i'm, I'm not too sure um it all it all depends really on sponsors and the way the whole world's going really i guess mate uh, i know you said like you had crazy sponsorship well, the team had crazy sponsorship a couple of years back now um I saw a quick video a couple of weeks ago, uh, like a, um, a tour, if you like, of, of like Dynamics HQ, and there's some pretty meaty cars in there. Um, and it kind of made me think, you know, of all of the cars that are Dynamics owned or have raced um, from, you know, early 90s to now, if you could jump in one and have a go, what would it be? Oh, it'd be the DC5 Integra from 2005, 2006, 100%. I yeah, love that. That's a cool car. I was yeah. watching not sure if you've seen it, but there's uh, like a sit down with uh, Jason and your dad, and he and Jason was just out still today fuming. <laughs> yeah, I, God, so, <laughs> I remember that back in the day. Obviously, I was only I was only young, but there was a lot of beef back. Then. I know they laugh about it now, but it got pretty pretty hairy at times like, <laughs> for a few years. Um, I won't go into detail, but yeah, my dad hated him at the time. <laughs> They're great mates now. But it was, it was that thing. It was all a bit of, bit of fun and game. It was great for the spectators, you know, um, smashing, the, smashing the hell out of each other. Um, but, uh, you know, it did affect, affect, affect the family a, a somewhat, but it was all good. It was yeah. all water under the bridge now anyway, and it's good. We can, we can laugh about that's it. A, that sit down they done together um, a couple of weeks ago. That was, that's an oh, awesome. That's that really good. I really enjoyed that, yeah. That's really good. And uh, lastly, I ask everyone I've interviewed this. It's a little bit of a fun one. And you get some great stories out of this. So um, what was your first car? And have you had any, got any stories back? Like, for example, Mike Epps yesterday had like an old 1.2 Clio and that ended up written off. And that's quite a recurring theme of race drivers. Well, my first car, actually, when I was about 10 or something, um, I, think was, I think I was about 10, um, my stepdaddy set up a little... A lot. I started to set up a little uh, sort of bank account for me to put my birthday money in to put, uh, put a, save it for a car. Um, and anyway, I saved up about three, three and a half grand. I bought a 1962 Beetle, oh, which nice. was which was ace. It was about that far off the ground, proper slammed. But that thing used to break down all the time. So uh, my my mom's dad, he gave me his. Um, it was a dog mobile at the time, which was a bright green Skoda Skoda Felicia 19. 19- 99 or something i mean it was it was badass <laughs> nothing probably far from it uh car wise crashes i've had i've had a few but that that one ended up being a being a field car which is it don't none of the panels are really straight on it now i remember i broke my knuckle on it i was drifting in my, my mate's got a farm and we go up there drifting and stuff and uh, i remember he, i was in the skoda just front wheel drive just pulling the bar and he was in a he's got a big five series just like a boat and he hit me about 40 miles an hour Almost tipped the car. The, the door jabbed me in the ribs. He smacked in that far, and I somehow broke my knuckle on the gear stick. Which is pretty funny. Um, but other other crash crashes wise, I crashed a. I mean, I've had I've had loads of stupid crashes. Like I remember being in traffic on the way to West Brom in the morning to work, and I was like half asleep, and I ran into someone in the back back of their car. It weren't that bad. Didn't do anything to theirs, but it like did a headlight and stuff on the car at the time. 
Um, but big road crashes haven't really had that many. It's more in the race cars. I've had quite spectacular ones. The one at Olsen, um, first round uh, in 2019, was a pretty big one. Because I thought, because I thought I thought I destroyed. Luckily, the car was fine. It did did some front subframe damage. Um, but I'd gone for the inside. I was racing um, a guy called Ollie, and um, I went, basically went for the lunge and. As I went for the lunge, he sort of spotted me late and moved over. But at that time, I was already there. I was already committed. So my front left wheel hit his, or he hit my left front wheel, which broke my steering. So basically, I, me and him just went straight on into the wall. Uh, there's a video of it. It's pretty savage. And I ended up on my side. Um, the side it landed on actually was mint. Like some, I got, it had big foam barriers. But the, the bad thing about the crash wasn't really the car. It was more the poor Marshall who got nailed by the... Um, phone barrier there's a video and this phone barrier hits him and he goes flying he had a cowboy hat on and just goes flying i felt so bad after the video I, I went and got a load of a load of beers and found him later and said sorry and uh, gave him a beer which which kept him sweet <laughs> that's good uh, other than that like i say um good luck with obviously whatever you do uh, in the future and uh and like yeah. Said, yeah and i really appreciate it thank you good to talk to you mate and uh yeah. best of luck in the future for you as well man